Welcome to TheaterCast, part of the EdReach Network, giving educators a voice, a big voice. You've reached episode number 61 of TheaterCast, and joining us this week is John Prignano from Music Theater International. And as always, and with the little musical intro, is dun 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 Danielle, finalists. <laughs> <laughs> we are in the same room at the same time. Do not adjust your sets. <laughs> <laughs> we are joining you live from the Educational Theater uh, Association Conference in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, so short drive for Danielle, a little bit longer for me, and I believe John probably flew. <laughs> um, and uh, John works for Music Theater International, and I want to say they are uh, one of they are my favorite place. I always look when I'm deciding on a musical. It's MTI for us because they provide great customer service. And it's amazing how far great customer service works. Because if it takes a, it's got to be a, you know, I have a perfect kid for a perfect thing to go off range. But it's, I always look at the MTI catalog first because they're great at customer service and offer a lot of different resources for us. Can you tell us a little bit what is your job at MTI? My official title is Senior Operations Officer. So my job basically is to um, make sure that every department is running properly and everyone has the tools they need in order to get the jobs done. Um, and it also spans over, you know, looking at new titles and looking at new works, overseeing the development of the junior titles, overseeing the development of the school editions, um, one big project we're working on right now is overhauling our, our website, uh, which is a huge job because we're really combining our B2B business to business with the e-commerce and we're really trying to make it cohesive so that teachers and everyone can actually do more processing online without having to um, call in and wait to talk to an agent or if you get home from rehearsal at 3 in the morning and need to order additional books, you can just go online and do it. <laughs> And that's great. I um, the M, uh, the website's really um, I really like the MTI shows. I like looking through the catalog, uh, and I'm that part's already in a you know a good spot now. And in, in comparison to some other places, and that's what I've seen. And I like how you all built that community so that people who are you know the challenges of doing. Yep. Shows because with every show comes okay. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing Millie, oh, I have to get 20 flapper dresses <laughs> or an elevator or an elevator, yeah, an elevator. Yeah. <laughs> and typing tables and yeah. uh, and then you can connect with people who've either gone through the process, connect with them, share resources, mm -hmm. um, and that's a great service that you all offer to us out there because sometimes you know it's if we're running a one person show. We need to find all the shortcuts we can <laughs> to make sure that we're able to do that and, you know, still have hair or, or, or our sanity lot. by the end of it. <laughs> well, that's where it all came from. I mean, going to these, going to conferences and talking to teachers, it was like, how can we further help you? Um, and, you know, a lot of the questions we got, and this is going back to 1998 or 1999, we've had community rentals, which is now going to become our community marketplace since about 2000. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it was people calling us going, I'm doing Sweeney, where do I find the knife? Or I'm doing uh, Into the Woods, I need a Milky Way. Can you give me names of you know schools who've done it? So our answer to that was doing two things. One was listing all of our productions on our website mm -hmm. so that you could easily just go in and see and sort by state and know who's doing it around you and maybe even doing kind of a co-pro or something with mm -hmm. them where you can share expenses. Then we also came up with the community marketplace. Um, and that's been, you know, it's kind of like uh, uh, eBay, but we don't get involved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we just do the, we just make the connections so you guys can, mm -hmm. yeah, we just host it so that you can list your stuff and other people can find it and then you have the conversation of buying, selling, renting, or whatever you need to do with that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been very successful. Um, that'll definitely carry over to our new website in a more modern way, but it'll definitely carry over to our new website. 
Well, we'll certainly make the URL available in our show notes. It might be a great time to say the URL um, for the people who might just be listening. Uh, basically, it's uh, mtishows.com, and then you just go to the community, community rental tab on our website. Um, actually, I lied to you. Right now, currently, it's in mtishowspace.com, and you go to the community rental tab. Uh, if you go to the MTI shows and you go to the show page, there will be a community rental tab on the show page mm -hmm. also. So you can get it from two different places. We're trying to make it as accessible as possible for you. I know that teachers really appreciate <laughs> yeah. that because we've got so many. It's interesting. To it's juggle. a small little thing, but it, it makes a big difference. And isn't that what, kind of what it's about? Mm -hmm. You know, making the small, all the small differences, adding up to one big one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, because. It just makes it that much easier because sometimes she was calling for the strangest props. Yeah, <laughs> and you're like, and why were you doing the wheels? Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know, you're doing Aladdin. And you need to like, fly, how do you fly the carpet? Right. Dozens of people have done it before. Why reinvent the wheel? Just you know, talk to somebody. Yeah. You know, that's what MTI show space is for. That's why you know we do. There's a lot of connecting through that. Um, we're really happy with that. With how that's worked out and how teachers have really kind of owned that and really. You know, it's kind of interesting. We, didn't, we weren't really sure what was going to happen with it, but one person puts a question out there and 9,000 teachers answer and go, well, you can do it this way. Oh, well, you can do it that way, or you can do it this way. It's, it's really cool that that's happened. We're really excited about that. Does yeah. it require creating a username and account? Mm -hmm. and you have to create uh, an account, but it's free. Um, it's minimal information. Um, it's just there so people know who you are yeah. and, and track you so it's not just an anonymous mm -hmm. person saying, do this. Okay. Yeah. Free people. Free. <laughs> yeah. That's our Freeze. favorite flavor. So, um, <laughs> when did you get the theater bug, <laughs> and how did wow, you make a career I, um, of it? <laughs> my career is very interesting. I um, actually wasn't. I lived in. I grew up in New Jersey, in Newark, which is literally a 15-minute train ride into Manhattan. But I didn't grow up with theater. I didn't know anything about theater. When I was a kid, there was a dance studio down the street from me that I would just sit and watch the dancers all day long. And then my uh, sophomore year in high school, I actually just started to take dance classes about an hour away from where I lived. And it was great. I would sit on the bus, do all my homework, go take dance classes, and then come home. Uh, so that's kind of how I started the theater bug. And then I started doing summer theater and then in college, I was a dance major. And after college, I started performing um, mostly tours, mostly uh, national tours and stuff. And I did that for a long time until I decided I didn't want to do that anymore. And I got a, luckily got a job with MTI. It was actually by accident. How I, did you start there? What was the first position? I was the receptionist. <laughs> no, pun <intended. laughs> no pun intended for a position. First, to uh, I was a receptionist. Joke. And um, yeah, MTI had just moved from a space where they had basically eight dedicated phone lines to a space where they had unlimited phone mm -hmm. lines. So they needed someone to really kind of just organize, like, organize mm -hmm. the call center or organize how it all worked. Um, and that's what I was, that's, I was hired to be the receptionist. And then, um, you know, I worked on that project. And then from there I moved to the associate director of non-equity licensing, which is amateur licensing. And then from there I moved to senior vice president. And then now I'm a uh, senior operations officer. <laughs> yeah, the great thing about the great thing I mean, about MTI true. is they really love working, you know, with people within the company as as positions open up or create positions. I mean, you know, um, we're constantly looking at the needs that need to be serviced and how mm -hmm. can that be? Uh, uh, who can do that job? And we always look within the company first. It's a great place to work for many reasons, but that's you know, it's really great to know that. You have this. There's this opportunity, and if you're really interested, you can really work at it. Most of the people that are in management positions started out in other positions in the company. 
that speaks highly of it being a good place to work and people want to stick around. Yeah, I'm very fortunate. I, I really I love my job. <laughs> <laughs> I love my job. I love what I do. I love what we do as a company. Um, I love coming to these conferences. I love the teachers. I learn so much. Everyone's like, why do you go to conferences? I, you would be surprised how much I learn coming to these conferences and hearing problems and hearing you know obstacles that mm -hmm. teachers have to deal with and being able to go back and being at a company going, you know, I heard this at a conference. How can we solve that? And we do, and we try. And we really, you know, we really try and go, okay, what is it that we can do to help solve that issue? Not all of them are solvable, <laughs> but um, <laughs> the ones that we can, we really try and solve. So. Yeah, and I think that's what's really nice about your company is that you take the time to listen because there are groups out there who shall remain unnamed <laughs> that, you know, here's this and here's the sites that make no sense. <laughs> well, and part of... Up. Part of what we did, you know, part of my job when when um, I was moving from receptionist into licensing was looking at licensing as a whole, like holistically going, how does this really make sense? So that's when we came up with, you know, assigning an individual person to a state so that Nick, every call, you would always talk to Sharon. Sharon. <laughs> um, <laughs> What was, you know, because what was happening is you would call and say, I need something, and they would say, okay, well, let me see if your paperwork is in, and then you'd have to call back and have to start that process all over again. Once you found, once we found that you had a licensing agent, you would call Sharon, and she would say, well, call me back in an hour, you'd call back, and she'd go, yep, yeah, Nick, it's here, I got it, and your phone call went from 30 minutes to three minutes, mm -hmm. or even less at that point, um, and that's worked out really well for us, really well, um, and it also... Is a, there's a personality to it that really lets you connect, even though I don't know if you ever met Sharon. Have you ever been to our office to meet Sharon? No, I haven't. Well, you, have been to come since, to the uh, you have to come to New York. Next time office. I <laughs> come to New York, I will come to um, Sharon and take a tour. <laughs> and then meet her, because you know, I think you kind of probably have a relationship with her now. Mm -hmm. You've been working with her so many years. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, what? I have no idea. I'm not the one who does any of these. Oh, things. okay. Well, there's. Stand where they tell me Ohio. to. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Honestly, I just don't know as Ohio. Um, <laughs> and I had the interesting conversation with Sharon. It was two days after um, Into the Woods closed at my school. I had my appendix out. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, happy two, days. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> and when I got back to school, I'm like, Sharon, I'm sorry. I had my appendix out. No one was there to collect the books. But they're on their way in two weeks and all that for me. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's what I always tell everyone at my workshops is about communication. Mm -hmm. We deal with thousands and thousands of people. You know, there's 25,000 schools, there's 10,000 community theaters, there's, you know, there's more organizations than you, than, than, than you can really think about that we have to deal with on a daily basis. So if you can communicate to us what your needs are in an articulate way, in, in a timely fashion, we can usually respond and help you. If we don't know, we can't help you. I mean, mm -hmm. so it really does come down to communicating, calling Sharon and going, this happened, I know I'm late, it'll get there, just put a note in it. She can put a note in and, and just know, okay, this is going to be late and this is why this happened. Um, and it's about communicating. Really is, you know. Mm -hmm. We try and make that communication fairly easy. Although emergency email. appendicitis is a pretty lame excuse. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, uh, my appendix <laughs> knew the show must go on. It knew. It I waited. can't do it. And get it knew. You gotta wait it till that final. final it's bow. like start hurting Sunday. So like, okay, <laughs> show's done. Did you get out of strike too? Uh, no, we strike oh, Saturday. Oh man. Now. So you think it was your, so you think that was your appendix? You think that was just you mentally holding it together yeah. until? <laughs> Could be. Um, I, I don't know. Until the woods was, it was definitely a challenge. It's a big show. Well, it's, it's a, a big, big show. show. Yeah, it's a, a big, big show. show. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Mr. Sondheim, we'll work you. <laughs> um, it's not a show you can kind of like phone in for. You really have to be on top. No. Of it. <laughs> It was definitely just 
a cha I mean, it's a challenge. I love the story. Um, it was the first Broadway show I ever saw, so that held a special place in my heart. It was just getting everything together all at the same time and everyone there at the same time was a little bit of a always challenge. always a challenge. Yeah, that, that, that's sketch apart. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of communicating. <laughs> <laughs> that, that part is like, come, come on. Yeah. <laughs> that's got to be so hard with all the kids and all the activities and yeah. personal stuff. Parents. And parents. Just suddenly deciding, yeah. it's time for you to... Go see your brother play soccer, or what? Um, and I know um, you guys are always on the forefront of providing new services to us as um, your customer base, and like um, I about cried the day rehearsal score came out. I was like, "What? I don't have to use a tape anymore." Yeah, yeah. Do you want to talk about what that is? Uh, rehearsal score is. Um, computer program, and I think now it'll be available on iPad or Not in yet. the near future. It's in the very near future, yeah. Um, that has the whole score of the show, and you can set the tempo. It plays it great for rehearsals, um, and you should only use it for rehearsals. It's designed to be only used for <laughs> rehearsal, yeah. And it's only the um, piano vocal score. Yeah. It's not the full orchestration, so you really can't use it no. for performance. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could, but... It's a little clunky. Uh, 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 well, it's yeah. a little clunky. It's a little clunky on purpose yeah. so that it kind of deters you from using it for performance. Because our agreement with the authors is it would only be, you know, we can only sell it to be used. Actually, uh, we can only rent it to be used yeah. for um, rehearsal purposes. But it makes that process so much easier because you're yeah. able to work through, you know. Okay, so you so sometimes reference CD, the music that's on the reference CD, and that match. But, sometimes it uh, doesn't. Uh, you know, it's the flip of a coin for that. It, it really well, you have to know, I mean... It, you know, especially yeah, depending yeah, when when the show was produced. I mean, sometimes you have shows that you have that are from 1950s, and there might have been an update or something. So that, yeah. You know, well, even new shows when when they come into our catalog, authors decide this is this is the definitive version, even though it's different from the Broadway version. Mm -hmm. And that CD may have already been recorded, yeah. so you're going to have a different version. Um, yeah, it's always best to check on that. I tell everyone always, you know, don't use the CD to rehearse unless you absolutely know that the dance music's the same dance music that's going to be in your box. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that's where rehearse scores. Yeah, for. but yeah. then you don't have to worry about it with no. the rehearse score. Um, and kids love the, it. They load on their computer at home and they play and with it. And it can save you rehearsal time because here's your after work. Go do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah give it to a kid. You cross their fingers and that's what's pray that really they do great, it. That it's not just so you don't, literally for use in rehearsal, yeah. but yeah. that it's kids can put it on as yeah. they need it to rehearse on their own because. Yeah. Lord knows there's never enough time to rehearse in rehearsal. <laughs> They've got to go home and, to do it. Yeah. Yeah. The logo packs which are great. Logo packs is really um, professionally done. That's again, that was, that's a response. That too, yeah, a logo pack that, basically yeah. is when we acquire a show, we hope to acquire the original logo with them. Mm -hmm. uh, not, in, in, in a lot of cases, that's not always possible. Um, because the use of the logo is actually covered under copyright. You can't just use someone's logo without paying them a fee to do it. So what we do is we acquire the logo and pay the, the whoever needs to be paid. Mm -hmm. um, so that you can then take the logo and then use it for your advertising, mm -hmm. um, not merchandise. You can't. We don't have merchandise rights, but um, advertising, online, tickets, all of that. Um, and it looks, um, you know, it's a Broadway logo. Mm -hmm. um, which a lot of people do prefer to use. Mm -hmm. right. It's well, recognizable, it gets the old butts and seats yep. <laughs> that mm -hmm. everybody yep. yearns for. Right. Yeah. And then there's some shows that we just don't have it for, and that's uh, because we can't acquire the rights, unfortunately. But those are, you know, that again came from having a conversation with teachers mm -hmm. about, you know, being trying to sell a show to have their community understand that it's. The you know it's the Broadway version of the show, mm -hmm. and we just had we're having these conversations. We're like, well, the logo would help. We're like, <laughs> okay, well, that well, should we'll be easy. That. Yeah, that should be easy. <laughs> well, um, just not having to do graphic design. <laughs> that yeah. part of graphic design yeah. is yeah. 
Yay. And I was like, oh, 20. Oh, I have to come up with a logo for a show. Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. And yeah, you can assign a kid. And I want this, this. And, right. and just sometimes our process of getting that done can get cumbersome. But mm -hmm. no, you don't have to worry about it because you have we it. We have it for most <laughs> all of our shows. Yeah. yeah. Easy peasy, fresh and cheesy. Love it. Um, oh, another one of my favorite things is um, oh, it's my sounds um, like. What does it do? <laughs> no, I'm. <laughs> what are some of your more popular? Yeah, or, what, some of our more popular. I like to use. <laughs> um, you know, our rehearse score, our logo pack. Uh, we offer transpositions mm -hmm. for a lot of our shows. We know that, especially in the education market, that the kid, you know. A kid just can't sing Tony in West Side Story mm -hmm. uh, uh, the same way an adult could. So we do have transpositions for a lot of our shows. Most all of our new show, all of our new titles, we have transpositions available. So if you need to, you know, transpose down a half step, mm -hmm. we can do that for you on a song by song basis. So that's been a really big help because are either of you music musicians? Well, I'm the opposite <laughs> of a musician. Transposing music is really difficult. Yeah. I would agree with it's that. Not, it's not easy, <laughs> it's time consuming, and it's costly. So. Yes. Um, it's math. Yeah, yeah, there it is, is math like involved. Music, it is. I'm not it's music math. Yeah. Well, that's even like, things. sounds worse than trigonometry to me. I admire and don't understand. Yeah. yeah. So um, we do that. Um, and, but the nice part about that is if you have rehearsal score, you can trans see correct. what key you want to order yep. it in. Yeah. Um, you and can I know, test it with your kids. And kid. especially, you know, what the age level uh, I deal with is, you know, voices can change mid-show. I can tell you what changed during working he was. Boing, boing, mm -hmm. boing. By the end of the ride, it was like, now he's a giant in like 65. <laughs> wow. Right then he was like, that's awful. He was like yeah. a giant thing. <laughs> yeah. <at> that <laughs> yeah. And, you that's know, true. So, I never even thought about that. Yeah, the middle of a rehearsal period. Yeah. There was no week of the show. show, so I mean, we didn't yeah, have time to read both. But it's something I never thought about then, or considered. You know, yeah. Jimmy and Mill, I'm probably sure that's one of your ones in transpose mode is Jimmy and Millie, because yep. it's uh, that um, the one song when he's on the balcony. Yeah. It's hot. It's, it's, there's, it's, it's, it's a there. tenor. <laughs> and just. And to do, I mean, kids can do it, but to do it consistently, sometimes it's difficult. So, you know, mm -hmm. you take it down that half step or whatever, and it just gives them the ability to sing it with confidence mm -hmm. and get it done well, you know. Uh, what else do we have? We have um, transpositions. We have uh, orc orchestra, orchestra, which is an orchestra supplement system. And basically, if, say you're doing a show like Millie, orchestration is, I think, 24 piece, 22 piece, something like that. Um, you may not be able to even fit 22 pieces in your kit. I don't know. <laughs> but you may only be able to have five. The Orc Extra will play the other 19 pieces. Did I count correctly? Did I do math well? I, 19, I, five, yeah. Was I not clear before? Not <laughs> <laughs> I thought you had to count correctly. <laughs> um, so it'll play the other parts for you. And again, it can transpose. So if you had trans, if you needed to transpose, it'll transpose it for you. Um, it's a great tool to use if a you don't have, you can't get the full uh, orchestra, or if you just can't fit the full orchestra in your pit. I mean, that's what a lot of you know people say, especially in community theaters. They're like, we have no room for 22 pieces. There's just nowhere to put right. them. <laughs> so it's like, you know, we or have no two pianos. Or, 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 yeah. or the resources, right. yeah. So this kind of supplements that for you. Um, we are, one of our newest ones is Keyboard Patch Solutions. Um, any musician will know programming a keyboard for a show mm. is really daunting in the sense that the way keyboards work is, you know, most Broadway shows have at least one or two keyboards that cover certain parts, um, but they're programmed for that specific keyboard. So you'll get a score that says, you know, at measure 14, patch number 71. <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah. Or, you know, or, you know, dongle bells. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> and um, 
So what we've done is we, we've partnered with uh, uh, Real-Time Music Solutions and we created Keyboard Patch Solutions. So basically you download this program onto your computer, you connect your computer to the keyboard, it knows all the patches for that show. It know, and it's based on the original Broadway production. So you have the authentic sounds that were originally played in the Broadway show. Virtual Music Math Nerd. Yeah. Basically, That's awesome. yeah. <laughs> and it's and it's really simple. I mean, it, it just saves you anyone you know, programming. It just saves you all that time and the money if you have to, you know you have to get a specific keyboard or what was that sound. It just saves you all that time and all that money in doing that. And it's makes it it helps it sound like the real show, the real Broadway original score. Um, those are big ones. Am I leaving anything out? Uh, we just partnered with Scene Partner. Um, oh, and Scene Partner has been a lot. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's um, it's an app. It's for oh, yeah. iPhone and iPad. I want them to add Android. Yeah, yeah. We, we're working on. Yeah, we're working on it. Um, oh, that's, sorry, I'm a little further. That's, um, we, we've talked about that. that. No, they know. We know. They <laughs> sorry, know. Two Google certified YouTube's here. Yeah. <laughs> no, we know. Um, but it's basically an app to help your kids get off book. It doesn't teach the music yet. Um, <laughs> But it helps them get off books. So say you're doing West Side Story, you're playing Tony. You rent the uh, uh, the script, West Side Story script, from their website. You download the app for free, and then you choose Tony, and it'll highlight all of Tony's parts for you. So then you can either choose to rehearse by scene, or you can read through the whole show. Um, you can even have Maria read, at, like you can record her lines into it. So that it plays back her line, and you could hear actually Maria sing doing her lines. You two would be a great Maria and Tony. It would be quite a show. Quite a show. The underside. Story. <laughs> yeah. 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 The backside story. It would be terrifying for all of us. I I'd come see it. I, I, okay. I'd come see it. It'd, it'd be, be a comedy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, we can call it Wet Side Story. Yeah. <laughs> Nerd Side Story. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> trademarks, don't anybody try it. Yeah. Right. We'll know. Um, but that's our newest resource, and it's there to just as a tool to help. You know, it's not going to, it's, it, it's just there to help a little further. Mm -hmm. Oh, and um, more. what's really nice. Because, you know, choosing a show is... Mm. Daunting. Uh, yeah, it can be daunting at times. Uh, I'm not directing the musical this year, so I didn't have to have that, you put that big endless smile. search. Yeah. <laughs> you, I usually do, but <laughs> this year I'm not, so that's, that's kind of nice. Um, so I'm being crazy and doing Shakespeare. Um, anyway, what you all offer is... Um, the perusals that you can get electronically for a very small fee and so much cheaper than the shipping and you don't have to wait yeah. and so you can get it now which is great for those of us who want it not I need to know if this yeah. is right well e-perusals are you know we we realized that it was very important to have something that was electronic and like you said you don't have to pay shipping fees um, you, five bucks and it's five dollars for the first email address, and then two dollars for each additional email address is up to five additional. Um, which is nice because then you can have, if you're a community theater or if you're a school, you can have one sent to your principal, you can have one sent to your PTA if they need to read it, or if you're in a community theater, you have it sent to your board members or your reading committee, and everyone can read it at the same time. You don't have to constantly pass a book around. What format does it come to it's, you in? It's, a, it's in PDF. It's a proprietary software. And basically you just have to, um, you just register. And you can't print. Mm -hmm. Actually, you can't download. Um, and uh, if after your uh, six-week period, it actually goes away, you can't access it anymore. Like Mission Impossible. Like it's Mission Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we do that with a lot so of our resources. Cool factor, yeah. We do that with keyboard patch solutions. We do it with Org Extra. We do it with Rehearse Score. Yeah. I mean, you have to protect your property, yeah. and that's, I mean, that's, that's part of the artists. And wow. that's your, yeah, it's the copyright. Stuff. Yeah. You know, that's our, 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 our job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, 
that we do. We protect the copyright of all this stuff. Um, so what is kind of the process when a um, properties coming up for uh, it's um, coming up that it would be eligible to be licensed or it's like included to, in your catalog or yeah you mean acquiring, acquiring it into the catalog yeah or? acquiring sorry <laughs> you know everyone asked that question <laughs> it, there's just so many different ways that that works um, it, you know there are there are some authors who are just part of the MCI family, and it's kind of, well, you write the show, you know, it's going to be in our catalog. Um, there are some shows that that we make an offer on, and other licensing companies make an offer on, and then, you know, you have to go and 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 bid against other licensing companies. Um, you know, there's just so many ways it happens. Sometimes it happens even before it even gets to Broadway. Mm -hmm depending on the author and the show and, and what it's about. Sometimes um, a show will have a long run on Broadway and then close and, you know, then be on tour forever and then it's still, no one still has it mm -hmm. available for licensing because it just does so well. Um, you know, and then there's shows like Les Mis that we had in our catalog for a very long time before we actually were able to release it. Um, you know, the first time we released it was the school edition. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, kind of okay. changed how the process was working, you know, because uh, traditionally and for most of our shows, we release shows, once they're in our catalog, we release them to the professional market, regional theater market, then we do community theaters, then we release to the education market. Um, it's just, you know, how it works. Well, yeah. it, uh, it, you make, you get a bigger pull from... Yeah. Well, it, yeah, I mean, a school, you know, even if a well, I community mean, theater or regional theater does it in your community... Professional, you're going to get a bigger pull in on that first yeah, run type thing, and then, and then it kind of as it works its way to education. But then on the educational, and you'll have much, many more productions of that. So I guess it's a, a it's a little change. And yeah, it kind of flips <laughs> it, but, mm -hmm. but that's you get bigger from a, the other. Yeah, but yeah. then you can get you know, but with more productions right. of that, then you, you know, a regional theater like doing a show in your market is not going to preclude you from doing it. I mean, you, you as a school kind of have a built-in audience right. that will come to the show anyway. You as a school doing it could deter the regional theater from doing it. So, you know, we have to keep that in mind, and we do. But with Les Mis, um, we thought, you know, there's so much about this that is educational-driven. Uh, let's see how this would work. And it actually, it actually worked so well that the tour kind of extended and um, well you know you think about it and think about the generational thing and how many people knew Les Mis and how many kids got to perform and those kids became adults later and it just new generations learned about the show as it was being done in the school market and you know as you know we just released it or this past year it was released in the community theater market and it's done really well um, and we have several school editions now, and mm -hmm. you know we have Rent, and we have Avenue Q, and we have Rat Time. Um, and again, those are shows that that came from a conversation with teachers about, you know, uh, we'd love to do Les Mis, but it's really big, and how do we get through it? And you know, so we came up, and we're like, well. We have, you know, we have this thing called a director's guide in our junior shows. Why can't we do something like that with our full-length titles for school editions? And that's what we did with Les Mis. We really we put this director's guide together that talks about, you know, what the show is about, why certain scenes are, you know, what to do in certain scenes, and uh, very specific to the show. Um, changed a lot of the keys. It's because, again, mm -hmm. you know, the Javert stuff, you know, kids just can't sing that. They can sing it, but they can't sing it consistently. Um, so that was changed, and it really became a model for what is now a new product line and um, an important product line in our in, 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 Yeah, MGI. which is appreciative on our end as teachers because sometimes uh, 
words or situations can get complicated, and some of those, uh, because you've worked with the authors, have said, okay, most of us can't get away with this. Well, a perfect example <laughs> is Avenue Q. Yeah. yeah. I mean, no matter how much we change the show, no matter what school you're in, you cannot sing The Internet is for Porn. There was no way you're going to be able to do <laughs> any school. It just was going to, it's impossible. Yeah. Um, and once we brought that to the authors and they understood that, they, you know, what they did was, I thought it was brilliant. They just came up with new lyrics and, and it's now my social life is online. And what they did, which was even more brilliant, is they went through the whole show to make sure that that made sense through the whole mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. as, 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 as opposed to just an overdub almost. Yeah. yeah. So they really yeah. went through it. <laughs> did anyone, have you seen the score? Yes. Yeah. It just played so well. Yeah. It played it's, really I did see well. that. Yeah. yeah it's really, <laughs> it plays really so well. Um, and you can also get the, the puppets from you all. We do have puppets. That is true. We have puppets for <laughs> both Little Shop, Shop and, and for Avenue Q. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that again was we were trying to make it uh, um, when you know when we got Little Shop, we sat down and said, "What's the you know what's the obstacles in the show?" Well, the obstacle the is the <laughs> plan. Um, they're big. It costs a lot to make. So we um, researched and found uh, this company in Pennsylvania who does VacuForm. Um, I don't know if you know what VacuForm is. It's basically they take big pieces of plastic and they mold it to look like something so that it doesn't have to be built out of plaster or mm -hmm. wood or anything. It's really durable um, and it's very light. So we went, well, this is, this is you know, it's cheaper to ship. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. easier for kids to handle. Um, it's They're durable. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, you know, we've been, we've, had, we've been doing it for over yeah. 10 years at this point. Yeah, I and they're still going strong, those puppets. Um, so when we got Avenue Q, we're like, well, the puppets are a problem. How are we going to deal with these puppets? So we went back to the same company and said, can we think about back before puppets? And they did a lot of research, and we came up with these puppets. And they're great. They're a lot of fun, and people love using them. I mean, they're built, again, to be durable. Mm -hmm. so that they can go from school to school to school, to school and, and still be used and, and work. Um, and I, I and really, they look great, too. They look really great. Yeah, it's fun. I have somewhere on a social network picture of me with when they were at the International Festival. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> and if you are a teacher, please go to an MPI workshop. Um, there is always an added bonus. Uh, <laughs> that's really how John got to know me. Is <laughs> year, every year he'd see me come in and uh, walk away in, with something. Yeah, walk away with something <laughs> with my musical theater <laughs> trivia that stuck in my head that serves me well at least once a year. <laughs> Are you coming to my workshop today? Possibly. Okay. <laughs> I, I did one a free standard rental at um, International. Mm -hmm. uh, so. I yeah. may try for the rehearsal score today. They have this great thing that you Yeah, what have we do called. at all of our workshops, at the end of our workshop, we do something called the Rehearsal Score Challenge. And basically, it's 10 questions, and we give away prizes. And third prize is usually a set of cast recordings, and second prize is usually a certificate for a free rehearsal score, which is a $300 value. And first prize is a certificate for a free standard rental, which is up to a thousand dollar value, and which could, you know, it's a lot yeah. of money. Um, and yeah, you win often. <laughs> She's the ringer. Yeah. <laughs> I think fans we have uncovered a scandal of epic proportion. No, <laughs> um, so if you get a chance, either here um, at the international festival or. Um, you can go to a couple of state festivals. We go to we go to Florida, Thespians. Um, yeah, we do. We actually list it on our website which festivals we go to. So you can check so, it out. Uh, and we'll put a link uh, up the, for that uh, after the show. Um, so there's just great ways um, to connect with the products. Um, what do you, we're a little geeky. We just did 
Daniel and I did an hour and a half with them, like I, uh, on tech <laughs> tips for the theater teacher, connected the theater teacher. Yeah, yeah, so, so much down there. Yeah, one of those dudes like. They were, uh, that was a lot. Of, it was really great. But oh, that was, was your workshop they were all talking about. Yeah, so many things. <laughs> um, what are some things you use uh, that are kind of your favorites? Um, um, that might benefit our audience. You know, I, I, I or you just love that like this I, app I use every day. It might be stuff my you use as you're traveling. Too. I, you know, this sounds crazy, but I use the MTI app all the time because I travel a lot, and I really, I don't think about it before I leave the office. I'm like, oh, I'm going to Cincinnati. Who's doing an MTI show in Cincinnati? Mm. I don't think about it before I leave the office. So on our app, you can search the area and see who's doing what show. Cool. And I just saw a production of Susicle Jr. yesterday afternoon, and it okay. was adorable and fun. And you know, you just pop in and see them, and it's just always so rewarding to see these kids. Just cool. And I mean, you all stuff. have so many shows anywhere you go. It's like, okay, what's play? I mean, it's I, kind I of true. They... It's kind of true. Yeah, between the junior versions mm -hmm. and the full versions and the school editions. You can always find at least one or two shows that you want to see in, in, in an area without really traveling very far. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a great idea. I mean, if, you're, if, you're, if you are a musical <laughs> theater enthusiast and you're traveling or even in yeah. your area, at, go to MTI shows. MTI, yeah, or MTI, or the, or the, it's the, an app. Shows. You go to the app store and you've got MTI shows, and it's a little app that you can download, and it has all the show descriptions right. on it, but it also by show and by region. Um, it uses Google Maps, oh, so cool. it'll tell you where it is and what, <laughs> what the dates are. It even has a link to their website if you really want to awesome. go, want to purchase tickets ahead of time and all of that stuff. It's really kind of cool. That is really it's kind cool. of my geekiness because I travel so much uh, for MTI sure. between conferences and seeing new shows. So it's my little. It's the one thing I use all. I always have my phone ready to go. <laughs> And, and a great way to know what's out there and what, yeah. what you know, keep it connecting with your customer, which is yeah. always great. Um, we are, we'd love to stay in chat longer. <laughs> We've already gone over 10 minutes on what we were supposed to. Uh, but I want to thank John for joining us. Thank you. Um, it was fun. It's great, great to it hear um, all the different things you offer. Go to their website. If you haven't selected this show, they have a lot of different options. So younger, uh, younger audiences, they have the theater for youth. They have the junior edition. Um, be sure to check those out. School editions, the full edition. <laughs> and all of our resources uh, and, uh, go along with all of them. Yeah. Um, so check that out. Explore. And uh, do a musical. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And... We will see you soon. Thanks again for joining us. <laughs>